probably one of the best games we've seen now for a while in the Club Hurling Championship. Ballyhale Shamrocks against Kilmical Croaks. Ballyhale Shamrocks 222, Kilmical Croaks 219. Now, I think it's fair to say going into this game, we would have said Ballyhale clear favourites. And especially in that early stage in the second half when Ballyhale were 14 points in front, you would have expected them to cruise home. I did not see a comeback like that coming from Kilmical Croaks. No, absolutely not. And I look, I'll be honest, is that when at half time you're looking at an 11 point lead for, for Bally Hale, and I think I'd kind of said it the week before that I thought that something like that could have happened where I said I thought that Bally Hale were going to win by 10 points. So at half time it was looking that way. And then, uh, Look, it was, it, was, look, it was a pretty remarkable effort, I suppose, by Croaks. And to get that back to one point as well, and look, we're, we'll get, we'll talk about the about the goal that's off, that uh, that dropped in anyway as well, that, look, that was an absolute sickener after all the work to get back as well. And look, I think, look, the, look, the keeper will probably be, be unhappy enough with that one now, probably be disappointed that that, that that one went in. But look, it was just remarkable that to go from, like you were saying, 14 points as well, to get that back down to one point and, pretty much no time at all really so uh no look a, a fantastic effort by croaks but look ultimately just came up just about short on the day i suppose and look for for them to be able to to mix it with uh with a, with the bally hale side now they know that they're they're capable of being on the same field as them and giving them a proper game as well and look that croaks team we'll talk about it in a minute is a very very young side so look they'll i think they'll take plenty of positives out as well Bally Hill have a bit more know-how though still. And look, that's the thing is that even with the, the comeback and everything as well, you still felt that the TJs, the Owen Cody's, the Colin Fenley's were still going to chip in with scores. And they just have that kind of know-how to get over the line as well. And look, they finished, despite all the momentum with being with Crokes, they finished the last 10 minutes, probably looked the better side as well. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned about Crokes' comeback. Let's not forget though, they gave themselves an absolute mountain to climb. Like at the start of the game, you know, it was even enough in the first few minutes. On the eighth minute, Alex Considine hit a point to make it three points to two for Croaks. But then from the eighth minute to the 28th minute, Kilmichael Croaks did not score. And Ballyhale hit a goal in nine. Colin Fenley getting that goal in the 24th minute. Like, that run of just letting another team dominate you, it's very rare you're going to win a game if you let a team get the run on you like that. Never mind the Ballyhale Shamrocks. Yeah, absolutely. Look, and... Uh... Oh, look, and I suppose look, it's, it was too much of a task as well, just in the second half to come back into that as well. Look, with the player, the caliber of players you're coming up against as well, look, you're exactly right that something has to be done there to stop the momentum as well. But look, they'll learn, they'll learn from that as well. Like you're saying, some of these, some of these fellas that are, uh, that you see are, that have made the breakthrough for Crokes in recent years, very, very young fellas as well that are kind of very early 20s. And look, They'll, that'll be a learning curve for them too and look I guarantee it won't be happening again for them as well I, you look at that team I think they could start dominating Dublin Championships a little bit the next while and like people talk about I suppose that recent years we had kind of the coolers coming through Dublin as well like facing off against the, the top sides in Leinster and I think that Ballyhill and Kilmacud could be a bit of a rivalry now for the next couple of next couple of years I'd say they could be facing off against each other at the latter stage is a good bit now yeah, I think there's definitely a very, very good shout that that could do that. Talk to me about the goals. Obviously, Chemical Croaks fighting back. The first one came, obviously, 35th minute from the captain, Craylon Conway. Alex Considine's goal in the 47th minute. That made it a one-point game, 119 to 215. That really turbocharged Chemical Croaks' fight back. Yeah, absolutely. And look, Considine's one of these flares. I think that Dublin kind of need where he's he's just kind of, he's a constant eye for goal. And I think it's nearly every game that I've watched with him playing, he seems to always end up with a goal as well. And that's, look, that's exactly what Dublin need. Their full forward line. Their full forward line last year was kind of a little bit, a little bit light, not getting the scores from it as well. You're relying on scores deeper at the field from Sutcliffe and Burke as well. So a fellow like him as well, he's so direct. And look, and I suppose, I think he's so he's kind of, does an awful lot of what people are hoping Ronan Hayes would kind of do for Dublin a little bit, but he's uh, no look. He, he's just such a threat. But look, the big moment I do think in the game is the is that it's the long puck from the, from midfield as well that drops in drops in past the goalkeeper as well. I think that's the real the real sickener, I suppose, for Croaks. And that's look. I think that was the influential moment in the game. Unfortunately for them. Yeah, no doubt. That was a sucker punch because they fought back, as you mentioned, from 14 points down to one point. They have all the momentum on their side. And then Ballyhale get, let's be real, a bit of a fluke goal to put them right back into the driving seat. And when you had all the momentum, when another team takes it all like that, it feels like they almost double the momentum 
that you've got. Crokes fought back. TJ Reid, we have to mention, clutching up in the last quarter with two huge points as Ballyhale got over the line in the end. And you talked about the Kilmacud lads mixing it with the Ballyhale lads. Obviously, the amount of players that are leaving the Dublin camp are rumoured to be leaving the Dublin camp. Obviously, you've got the likes of Chris Crummy. He's gone. He's a massive blow. Who else from this Croke side, along with the likes of Hayes and Whiteley, would you like to see get a run out in this Dublin team? Yeah, well, look, so I think the if you kind of talk about the young players straight away, I think Dara Purcell's the one that jumps off the page straight away. That He's well, hit five points from play today, and he's just had a fantastic kind of... Uh, uh, club championship throughout the whole thing. He's so young as well still. And that, look, I think he might even be an under 20 again this year and stuff as well. So that's the thing. He's very, very young. Lots and lots of potential. Can play out a corner forward or he can play in midfield as well. So like he's got that kind of versatility as well. I think he could be starting in the full forward line next year as well. Maybe coming out as a, coming out as the uh, as the extra man around midfield sometimes too in a Cahill Manning kind of role. So I think he's, look, I think he looks very very good prospect Brian Sheehy and well as well in the full back line is a good player Davy Crow I think is a great great chance of making it as well that he's he's just he can another player that can play in anywhere in the back line or in midfield as well Keno Kahasig Mark Grogan and then look I suppose the interesting one is Oshin O'Rourke as well I think that he's been arguably probably the, the best player in the Dublin Club Championship and that I wouldn't be shocked to see him going back and get a run as well yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of logical, isn't it, that, that the best player in the club championship should get a run out for that county side. But just ask Sean Curry. I mean, you can hit 10 points in the club final and you still don't even get a look in in the side. So Dublin choices don't always make sense, but I definitely would love to see these Kilmacud lads get a run out on this Dublin side because we do need fresh blood in there and we need a bit of belief about us in 2023. 